So, a component of ITM, number one, is a, con is a cultural control. So, a cultural control, for example, the crop rotation, intercropping, and planting pest-resistant varieties can disrupt a pest habitats. And they will uh, not uh, duplicate uh, they will not multiply rapidly because their environment are not conducive to their growth. So, so their cycle are being uh, uh, delayed or being uh, uh, postponed because of these uh, rotations or the cultural controls that are, you are using. So how would you communicate the long-term benefits of these techniques to our farmers? And uh, who are the accustomed to traditional methods? So you need to determine this, and uh, if you can be able to create a, a create a material, a educational material that can be able to uh, speak out to our farmers, that they can be able to comprehend and understand uh, what uh, the main points that you want to uh, instill to them. Then, our biological control. So, encouraging the use of natural predators or parasites, such as the ladybugs uh, for our aphids. So, in conventional farming, you cannot see these bugs because they are all being killed by the uh, synthetic chemicals. But by using this biological control, you can see you are confident or you are... Uh, not insecure if you can see any insects or uh, or any predators like the uh, uh, mantis, praying mantis. That is one of the uh, uh, best biological control that I have seen in some farms. They are using that so that uh, it could use it as a predator to the parasites to the pest and even spiders so if you can see uh, in, here in the Philippines the spider fighting is common even I when I was younger gu I'm guilty of that and uh, we are catching spiders to, to play for it but later when I grew up and I realized that these insects are beneficial to our environment because they are catching the the best in the field. I even now I am, I am more appreciate, appreciated, appreciative when I'm seeing this uh, to my to to my field. Okay, so how can you design a community training program on recognizing and fostering the beneficial insects? So that is part of your uh, part of your role. You need to design a training program that. Uh, that will highlight the beneficial impact of these uh, insects that are helpful. And also we have a mechanical and physical, physical control. So we have traps, uh, using traps, barriers, or hand-picking pests. And I, I also seen a video uh, in, I think it's in abroad, the mechanical trap that they are using captured a lot of uh, bugs. And you know what? That mechanical tool that they are using, uh, the insects that they captured are a very good source of food for their chicken. So they save a lot of resources at the same time. And converting it, those insects are being converted as a uh, important resource to, to feed their chickens. So that's it's a only a matter of being creative and uh, ingenuity to use the materials that we have. How would you guide a local farm community in setting up these low cost sustainable pest control solutions? And another one is a chemical control as a last resort. So using traps, barriers, or hand picking pests uh, are being used, no? So, this chemical control are still considered as an organic uh, in composition, but this uh, 
for our organic practices, these are the, the last resort uh, for our practices. Okay, so let's proceed to the benefits of the IPM. So the sustainable pest management reduce the need for our chemical interventions and uh, you know the chemical this chemical uh, pesticides it causes a harmful effect on our environment it's a long term effect and by using this uh, IPM uh, we can be able to preserve our biodiversity and you know this biodiversity where uh, organisms are making a contribution. Each of these organisms have a very important role to take in the environment. So your challenge is to explain uh, how uh, this can improve a farm or a farm's long-term sustainability. Because, uh, you know, our farmers are being into uh, conventional practices for so long. And uh, our goal here is to help them to get out from this uh, paradigm, their perspective that uh, their previous uh, practices are, are better. So we need, that is our challenge. And then another one is the environmental conservation. For the IPM, which promotes the practices that protect the natural ecosystem, that is our uh, key or the core message consider how you can engage with our farmers with stories of successful IPM implementation in other regions so by using this uh, you can be able to highlight their, their good practices and also you know the farmers are uh, to cease to believe to cease to believe sometimes I think most of the time and uh, they can be uh, amazed if they can be able to see how productive the farm, how profitable the farm, by using these uh, practices that uh, we are introducing in the organic agriculture. So, first question here is how would you explain the importance of crop rotation to a community where monocropping is common? So that that is a one way to to address in promoting organic uh, agriculture because uh, we are trying to to change their way of life since organic agriculture it requires a more diligent attitude a more hands-on and more uh, dedication and commitment so in the crop rotation, it is uh, it is re it, re it requires a uh, more activity compared to their monocropping. But uh, since we identified that monocropping is not uh, sustainable, is not sustainable, especially if the pests are widespread, it can easily wipe out wipe out the 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 plantations. So that's why we are encouraging the uh, what we call crop rotation, which is beneficial for the, for our sustainability for our farm. So this is the challenge on how we can be able to explain the importance. So that's part of our uh, we need to incorporate to our strategic approach. Another question is if you were tasked with introducing the biological control to a farming community. So if you put yourself in this position, what methods would you suggest? And how would you communicate their effectiveness? So in this question, since you will be assigned to the farming community, you cannot just easily uh, suggest what method is more beneficial to them until you get the problem so the main the, the main uh, or the first thing that you must have to do if you are in the community is to identify the problem in their farming practices you need to identify you need to list down specifically in, in, in the 
in their farming practices, you need to determine and list the problems. And then that's the time that you can be able to pinpoint or uh, strategically align a solution to that problem. And, uh, that, and that is the time that you can be able to effectively communicate the effectiveness of this um, approaches if you can be able to uh, determine what is the uh, problem of their community. And number three, what role can you play in ensuring that farmers use the chemical controls as last resort within, the, within an IPM system? So, since you are uh, a BS DevCom student, uh, your role is to inform, to educate, the farmers and uh, to ensure that the uh, chemicals are the last resort within the IPM system, uh, if you can be able to highlight the long-term and negative impact of these chemical controls to their health, to their family, to their loved ones, since they are also, most of our farmers are our husband, father, you can be able to touch their heart. And once that they, they, they can see the bigger picture for the long-term health of their family, eventually, they will be using this chemical control as the last resort because they, they care for their family. So that's the role, how you can be able to touch touch their, their heart towards the process. So applying your knowledge as BS Dev from students. So as communication professionals, your ability to effectively share the principles of organic farming will be a pivotal in promoting the sustainable agriculture. So your role is very important. And uh, uh, especially in our uh, rural and urban communities where this uh, farming, farming is their core livelihood. So understanding how to communicate the benefits of organic fertilizers, pesticides, and the integrated pest management is essential to achieving this goal because these practices are the key uh, activities in their farming. And the, the moment that you can be able to deliver this important message and communication to them, eventually, they can be able to adjust their farming practices and adapt to be into a more sustainable farming. So you can use the knowledge gained from this unit to create informative campaigns, workshops, and outreach programs that are tailored to the specific needs of your audience. So number one, uh, as part of our key communication strategies, is engaging the stakeholders. You need to, to engage with them. Use the real world examples where the farmers can uh, relate and, a success, and also a success stories to connect with your local farmers and showing them the long term benefits of the organic farming technique. So, there are nowadays we have uh, uh, farmer models in the organic farming that we can be able to use their testimony to encourage our farmers. And also the community workshops. So this is very common where we organize interactive sessions and our farmers can learn hands-on uh, hands techniques such as composting or setting up the IPM strategies. And also multimedia campaigns. You can develop a posters, a brochures, and videos uh, like this one that explain the complex topics in simple visual terms to reach a wider audience and also a feedback mechanism a feedback mechanism where you get the the responses of your audience so you ensure that uh, the audience can uh, your audience can ask a question or, or or they can give you the feedback on what they what are they thinking or their perspective so that they can so that you can be able to improve their understanding and application of this process. So here's our question. How would you adapt your communication style 
to different audience, especially if you are if you if you will go to the community. People are and compared to compared to us in the academe where we use the the English as our common language. So if you go to the community, um, your communication style must adapt to their uh, predominant communication uh, communication. So their language, you must adapt their language, and uh, especially no, our farmers, consumers, or policymakers when discussing the organic farming tactic techniques. So they need to easily comprehend the terms or the practices that you are trying to relay. The number two is what are the most effective way that you can encourage the farmers to adopt the IPM practices and considering both cultural and economic barriers. So, you know, the IPM practices, uh, it will really, since I, I mentioned earlier, it's a pivotal. It's really, it will turn the the practices of a farmer 360 degrees from the conventional practice. So, you can, in the early stage of adoption, uh, the effect of the IPM compared to the conventional might be less uh, uh, efficient, especially in the previous practices you can easily or you can immediately see the impact of their uh, chemicals. So it is a long term or it requires a long term approach where the farmers can see a long term benefit. So it's not just a quick scheme uh, approach, but it is a cycle approach. And you need to emphasize the monetary impact in terms of economic barrier. Actually, uh, if you can be able to emphasize to them that if they can create their own IPM, they can create their own pesticides, if they can create their own tools, eventually, actually, uh, in the long term, they can save a lot of money. So you can put them in a perspective of five years term, 10 years term, and if you can if you can provide them a actual computation of the costing that you can highlight the long term impact of their uh, organic farming practices compared to their previous conventional practice eventually they will be appreci uh, appreciated and they can be able to continue in adapting to the organic practice okay so that's the end of our lecture presentation. So here's the references of uh, our discussion. You may also check this to give you more uh, additional information. So thank you very much for being part of this lecture presentation in, in, as part of our organic uh, lecture series. So I hope uh, this uh, insights can be able to help you to form a better perspective in in what as what we discussed the uh, fertilizers the pesticides and the uh, integrated pest management as part of the organic uh, farming practices and uh, this is information could uh, could be very helpful to helpful tool to communicate to our uh, farmers community so thank you very much, and uh, I'll be seeing you soon on our next lesson.